I'm joined by John Bentley, a CBS News producer, reporter, digital journalist who has spent a lot of time in Libya as well as Afghanistan. John, thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So Libya is crumbling. Uh, the Gaddafi regime is, uh, seems to be on its way out. Now you spent uh, your summer vacation in Libya. So what have you heard that that's, you can tell us that's going on right now from your experience reporting from there? Yeah, not much of a vacation, I'm afraid to say, but uh, yeah, it's still there's still pockets of fighting uh, throughout Tripoli. Uh, still have several friends, uh, journalists at the uh, the Rixos Hotel in Tripoli, which is where all the journalists uh, have to stay when you want to cover the regime from uh, from that part of Libya, and uh, they're all still holed up in the hotel and, and sort of. You know, just kind of keeping an eye on what's going on. They say they hear a lot of gunshots, a lot of gunfire. You know, loud bombings. I think NATO's probably still bombing Qaddafi's uh, Qaddafi's uh, main headquarters, Bab al Aziza, which is only a couple of kilometers from the hotel. So when they bomb that, you definitely hear it. And uh, they've been doing that for months since the campaign started, and uh, it looks like the the fighting still continues there. Now, in your month there, I'm sure you had some interesting experiences with the minders and the Qaddafi people and trying to talk to some of the the local people. Anything you can share with us? Yeah, that's that's one of the real challenges of trying to report in Libya is that you are so tightly controlled by the Qaddafi regime. I mean, you, you can't fly into Tripoli because of the no-fly zone. Literally, you're picked up at the border of Tunisia by the government. They drive you into Tripoli and they put you up at this hotel where you can't leave without, uh, you know, but government mind with you. And, and supposedly they only take you to places or show you things that they want you to see. But it seems like reporting was still getting out as to the, the real story going on there. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, they do only take you out to what, what they want you to see, and they try to spin it their way. They say, you know, NATO is uh, bombing civilians and this sort of thing. But you sort of kind of look around and say, you know what, this, this doesn't look like a civilian area. Or you say, well, this, you know, this, this could have been a command and control center. You can see sort of military hardware. And, and they try and say, oh, no, 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 pay no attention to that, but pay attention to what we want to show you over here. So you sort of just have to look through that veneer uh, that that the Qaddafi regime likes to put up and really get to the heart of what's what's going on and and that's been that the you know the Qaddafi regime uh, has been indicted for crimes against humanity so they've been doing a lot of uh, bad things for a very long time according to the the UN criminal courts and and that's what we're there to, to see to what's what's really going on and what's what they've been trying to hide for so many years now the journalist uh, in Tripoli at that time um, you're covering Qaddafi and his family and they're saying things like we will never leave, and uh, you know NATO are the bad guys, and uh, the United States are, are, is evil. And um, I mean, do, in the people that you talk to, and seemingly from what we're seeing now, as the Gaddafi people are, are on their way out, that that the, the craziness of that regime just uh, wasn't wasn't really taken seriously. It wasn't taken seriously by the rest of the world. Unfortunately, you had to take it seriously if you were a Libyan citizen because, you know, he's been in power since 1969. There's a whole generation of people who know nothing but Muammar Gaddafi. So, uh, you know, with the arrival of the Internet and with satellite TV, you, you could see the cracks beginning to form. You could see people sort of not having to listen to state TV, not having to listen to the, the Gaddafi and his sons, and, and really sort of see what they were living under, which was a dictatorship. Um, but there's still a lot of people that are very loyal to him. As we said, there's, there's fighting happening right now and, and still people loyal to that regime. Uh, but, but the cracks are showing and, and the, you know, the rebellion that sprung up in Benghazi and, and has been gathering steam all over yeah. Libya is coming seems, to a head. It seems like that reality distortion field is finally breaking down. Yeah, it, it does. <coughs> and uh, it, there are still, like I say, there's some people who will, who will fight to the death for him. But yeah, uh, amongst a lot of people, it really is breaking down. It's it's a surreal sort of country to be in. I mean, you see huge, or you, or you did probably until the rebels got into Tripoli, you'd see huge posters and pictures of Gaddafi everywhere. I mean, you couldn't go more than a block or two without seeing a billboard or a picture or something of the of the brother leader, as he calls himself. So it is, it is very much a throwback to the times when, uh, when one man, through a cult of personality, could really control an entire country. And just from, from being there and your, your experience, how do you think this will differ um, as we go out into these, these, uh, into this new government, how, how, how do you think it'll differ from the way that Iraq ended up or is ending up? Well, uh, that's a good question and a good parallel. Uh, you know, I think it depends. Uh, well, first of all, they, they don't know where Muammar Gaddafi is, so I think they first have to find him and then to, to decide: will the 
Will the traditional National Council, will they put him on trial in Libya? Will he go to The Hague? Um, how is that going to be handled? I mean, uh, Saddam was, was handed over to the Iraqis and he was hung. Um, will that happen to Gaddafi or will he, will he stay in trial for his crimes? Those are, those are some big questions and I, I don't think anybody really knows the answers to that yet. It looks like Saif, uh, sort of one of Gaddafi's many sons, but certainly, <coughs> excuse me, his second in command and, and a very powerful leader in that country has been captured. Um, and it seemed like he was a pretty easy capture. Yes, I mean, uh, you, you know, the the rebels have always said we we know where these guys are. You know, we just need to wait until we have enough, you know, enough people there to find them. So, uh, I think his father probably won't be as easy, but uh, but we'll see. And then and then where they go from here. I mean, democracy is a is a messy business, and we'll we'll see how it, how it ends up. But I, I think they'll, there's basically two choices: do they does he stay in trial in Libya, or does he go um, to the Hague and stay in trial at the International Criminal Court? Well, thanks, John. Sure. Thank you for having me. I've been speaking with John Bentley from CBS News. I'm Dan Farber. Thanks for watching.